Sorry, I, th <laughs> I think he didn't have enough live uh, time in him. So uh, hopefully I can get him back on here. Um, yeah, it just like cut out on him. Um, I think you have to do enough lives where like, um, I'll, I'll send the invite guy. Hold on. All right, hold on. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I don't know how any of this works. I don't know. I, I, it might be just because you, uh, you probably don't do a lot of lives, and they kind of like keep you at a, like, time limit or whatever. Okay. Like I've done, I've done like a bunch, so I think I could go for like four hours. They let me go for four hours, <laughs> so um, yeah. So this is part two. All right, part two. So uh, what was part of the. Uh... The funny thing with uh, with Fused Together was I, I was definitely doing a lot of, like, the, the like, back and forth between, like, the lows and the highs. When we went in the studio, we recorded all of the instruments and vocals in, like, roughly two days. Yeah. yeah. Like, two to three. There, there might have been, like, a, a two-and-a-half-day period. But, like, most of the vocals were just, like, me busting it out in, like, a, like a three-hour time period. Mm-hmm. And I lost my voice so bad in the studio that, like, by the end of it, like, I, I couldn't speak at all. It was just, like, a little, like, ah, like, so, <laughs> the, so some of, like, the, there's definitely some stuff, like, on the, the Fuse Together album that, like, I cringe a little bit because I, I just remember, like, it being very, very difficult because it, it didn't necessarily come out just the way that I wanted it to. Yeah. And then um, when we got into clients and every record that I'd ever that, that I'd ever done after after that, um, I always used just a, a handheld SM7B, mm -hmm. uh, like one of those you know broadcast mics, and those yeah. are incredible for doing death metal vocals because yeah. you could you, there's no pop screen, there's no like you know you're standing however far away from the mic, like, yeah. you're gonna just sing with it the same way that you would like a, a an SM58, yeah, and um, so. Uh, it was a very different experience and over time my voice was dropping and, and becoming like lower and mids, mm -hmm. which I felt was a, a, a sweeter spot for me. I, I thought it, um, but I don't know, like when you go back and listen to like a lot of those like late nineties, like hardcore records and stuff, it's always kind of funny. Cause everyone did like, <laughs> and it's just like, I don't know what the hell. So, there's so that, like a, there's a little bit of that in the uh, early, the early course yeah, so stuff, you know. You're, you'll you'll never bring that back, then you're saying. Not intentionally, no, no. And I mean, I'm I'm happy that uh, you know I'm happy that my voice evolved in the way that it did. And... Yeah. Um, now I know the last album was 2009. Is is the Red Chord working on new music that's going to come out? Um, so I I know that the guy everyone's been very like finicky in terms of like how to address that as far as the new material like we all want to mm -hmm. we, we all would like to play and and do stuff and the biggest thing has just been like actual get in the room and jam together spend time and, and and to get it um i think that like especially this year where we got these shows we've been trying to figure out like all right well now that we're ready to play a show like let's try to like see what everyone has floating around yeah and jam on some riffs and and see how you know how it feels so ideally uh i i hope you'll hear something in the future it's it's just a matter of why i guess I've, I've learned better than to try to like you know set, set your clock by anything uh red cord <laughs> yeah do, now do you think there'd be like um any progression or difference or is it or like i mean the members kind of have the same thing that was going on back in 2009 that's like um you know it's it's tough to say because in a lot of ways like i i think i think like if if you look at it like fused and then you compare it to like even like teeth machine it, like there's a whole lot that's kind of like happened in there mm. 
and it's really like part of part of like what we've been trying to figure out is like what what is the you know 2024 red cord like what what is that now yeah um i'm excited like i hope that we get to the point that we record something with charn Mm -hmm. because he's incredible The the guy could literally play anything he's just unbelievable drummer every every drummer that we've ever played with is unbelievable but he's definitely like very unique and, and awesome. Uh, Mike from Sexless Marriage just signed in. What's up, Morowitz? The Hair Farm. <laughs> Gross screen name. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it, it, and it's like, um, you know, the, the other guys, like they did, um, like all the other dudes except for me, plus Sean Martin and, and Jake did uh, Umbra Vitae. And, oh, yeah. um, you know, it's kind of funny because, like, like I hear that sometimes like, when I've listened to their records, and I'm like, this is totally like, you know, this is like Red Cord Jr. on on some of it, you know, because you I, I can always just hear the parts that uh, yeah. you know, that Mike J uh, or that uh, that uh, Mike McKenzie was like writing, like his his like uh, leads and stuff are very like uh, interesting quality. That's like just it's very different from like other metal guitar players, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the the span of like when you had that hiatus going on, was there any other like thing like projects that you were working on, or was it kind of just like red cord and that's it? Like, if it's not red cord, I'm not doing anything else. Or were you like wanting <clears throat> to get into a band, or like? There was a point where I jammed with um, I jammed with Kevin on like a kind of a hardcore band and like kevin and and, and mike J, and uh that mike got real busy with madball and you know life just kind of gets in the way yeah but that um yeah that, that was about it i mean show wise wasn't there like a seven year hiatus yes. for you personally that you you didn't play any shows at all i mean that, that was that... It. yeah no there was like the the, the mike J kevin band that they got together for a little bit like uh that, that was interesting because it was I don't even know what year that was. Um, yeah, like uh, it it kept my voice in shape, and mm-hmm. and every time that like I've, I, I it used to be like oh you go a few months without singing, yeah, and then like you go back and it's like oh you gotta be careful maybe you blow your voice out or yeah. something like that was that was the first time that was the longest time that ever you know I I had like a period of going without you know without singing at all yeah. for two years, two yeah. three years maybe like it was just like whoa <laughs> yeah were you were you like chomping at the bit though to like play or were you kind of like life happened and you were kind of just like cool with life or were you kind of like oh shit i want to go out there and like play you know shows or create music or whatever i miss being creative i, I wouldn't say like i was like chomping at the bit to play shows i definitely missed the um I, I was a, I definitely missed like getting in a room with my friends and doing creative stuff. I miss being around my bandmates um, because like you know these these are my dudes for forever. Yeah. And it's like um so, sometimes like when you get in that you know you, you it's definitely like a different vibe like when you do anything else than like when you're around like your you know your band guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so but uh, but yeah I don't know like I don't. Miss miss the actual touring mm-hmm. like people will say like oh like I, every time you talk to somebody that comes from the background of like not uh like not from like the show hardcore scene yeah oh yeah like when you were touring that must have been crazy and it's like no you live in like a homeless person <laughs> yeah. you know you're sleeping in vehicles it's not it's not comfortable like it, it's it's gross it's irritating like you, you were as poor as can be yeah like, even at, like, like shit. The, yeah yeah you eating eating horribly yeah. and stuff and it's like you you'd have these like glimpses of things are going really good and like a transmission would you know the car accident would happen or a transmission would blow or yeah uh, and and it's just it's a different level of um just like anxiety <laughs> you know yeah so that being, like, said, I, I that being said like now now you wouldn't want to go on like a three-month tour no 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 like if i hit the lottery or something like that maybe like i'd be like all right and it it probably wouldn't be three months consecutive like one of the one of the tougher things we ever did was um like the only bands that ever went out 
for the only band that we ever went out with that does three months tour was Guar. Yeah. And uh, uh, right in the beginning of the Teeth Machine album cycle, they like hit us up and they're like, "Do you want to? Do you want to like do uh, September through like Christmas?" I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> I was like, yeah, like you know, because because we were like, "Oh yeah, you want to you want to take a tour with Guar?" Like we'd already done two tours with Guar. Yeah. It's always like fun and interesting and yeah. weird and and. and great but like wait a second you want us to do how long like can we do like half of it no no guar goes out you're either going to do all of it or you're not going to do all of it and it was just like three months on the road is just just punishing (laughs) (laughs) yeah that must have been crazy i mean you must have loved getting home after that three months though i mean like three months is a long time Uh, yeah yeah i mean and just uh, like you know i just I, I think about like some of the stuff that, hey, mom and dad, uh, I'm going away for three months. You want to watch my dog? Like, I mean, at that point, it's like it's not even your dog anymore. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like yeah, it's their dog. Yeah. You know, hey, hey, girl, girlfriend, uh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna leave. Like, I mean, that's like you might as well be like, you know, deploying or something like that. Like, yeah, yeah. Wait for me. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. like it's just it, that is an, like just thinking about that. That is like an impossible ask. And, um, you know, I, I, I get a kick out of the, uh, so, so our, um, our bass player, Greg, he met his wife and they started dating shortly before we, we did a tour where Greg was in another band in 2003 and she was around for the entire time. They're still together to this day from like, you know, Oh three through now. Wow. And I'm just like, wow, Holy smokes. Like, you know, like i feel if 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 we if if anyone i dated from from o <laughs> three through whatever i'm sorry i'm i'm so so sorry i i get it now that is a nightmare it's like yeah you honey i want to see you in like six months like oh yeah we're, i'm gonna be home for two days i'll stop off i'll say hi i'll use the laundry yeah that's dedication right there that's that's yeah. some some um before we do like the, i usually do a rapid fire uh question thing at the end of my talks i wanted to ask you where do you where do you get your influence for like the lyrics that you write and ideas and stuff like that where where do you draw from so i always drew from my surroundings like just what a lot of times work was my motivation just because it was whoever i was around whatever i was doing and i would always just try to find um i'd always try to like voice things that i didn't think were already like stories that weren't told yeah and um like fused together was like a culmination of a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. uh there was more um more of like like just trying to like do like a proof of concept Mm -hmm. like in in like like, uh the fuse days jar full of bunny parts was the first track that we ever wrote yeah and i remember being like okay what do we want to write about well i'll tell you what i don't want to write about <laughs> and like jar full of bunny parts was like the um like kind of our answer to like the dying fetus like you know kill your mother rape your dog yeah uh, yeah, yeah where it was like dying fetus gets thrown into the like at, at that point was getting thrown into like the like ignorant death metal when they had a lot to say yeah so i knew that we were going to get lumped into that and i knew that like i didn't want to sing about the like heartache and the romance and whatever. So like the, the line in like bunny parts was like, stop your whining because she thinks she's too good for you. You know, you'll meet a cute ball chick at your next show. <laughs> and it was like, that was like, you know, okay, we're, we're not going to be the, you know, the heart severed, severed, like whatever bands, like the, you know, the five, you know, four, four word uh, metal core. Bands yeah. Yeah. And stuff. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. I wanted to ask you, and also I wanted to get into black market sure. um, too. Um, how did that kind of? I mean, were you talking with Metal Blade, and they were kind of like, "Hey, you want to do this like little subset like thing?" Or how did that? No, actually no. Happen? So black market started on my own. Uh, so it was, it was me. It was me, Adam Wentworth from Red Cord, mm-hmm. and, um, and and uh, Mike from Premonitions. So initially me and Adam um, got this idea where we, I, I wanted to do a label and um, the first, I always hated the idea that like uh, you, you would 
find these like cool bands and they would do either a self-release or a label would do their release and it would always be release number one yeah and you never knew like, like when you were looking at that was there was there ever going to be a thing? yeah yeah That's so true. i um i remember like i was trying to like help bands and specifically backstabbers incorporated and a couple of other bands i tried to like do like uh take my public relations degree from college and like pitch them to other labels yeah. and um I remember telling backstabbers that if I ever found myself in a position that I was going to have a label, they would be the first band that I asked. And sure enough, like I couldn't get backstabber signed to like revelation or anything like that. So they were the first band that I asked. So it was, I did uh, backstabbers founded hanging and dead water drowning all at the same time, just so that I never had to have the stigma oh, of release number sick. one. Yeah. And then, um, and then I ran into uh, that I from a second story window in Cyopus, mm. and all of that was pre Metal Blade being involved. That was all. Uh, it, we got Mike uh, Mike Gaten from Premonitions of War, kind of like started hooking up with the project, and he was working for Lumberjack Lumberjack Distribution. Yeah. So we had this concept that we were going to be a label, a design firm, and work for like uh almost like doing like a distro slash like screen printing company yeah yeah and like mike mike gaten did lumberjack and he had a screen printing company adam did uh wentworth did like his own design stuff and i was going to be spearheading the label and then we were all going to kind of like throw in and like basically make like a like a relapse type like online distro yeah. didn't quite work out uh you know in our in our early 20s brain the way that we had done it and uh, black market started getting enough attention, at least at that point. That like when uh, when Redcord was finding a place to land at Metal Blade, mm -hmm. I was like, well, would you be interested in distributing this? So like, there was always a lot of confusion because people would be like, oh, Metal Blade has this imprint, and it was like, no, they were distributing, they're distributing the catalog, uh, you know, and and didn't have anything to do with like the A and R. They weren't like, hey, put out this band. Yeah. They were very, very supportive of whatever it is that I was bringing on board. And, you know, they, they, they never said, no, you can't do this or no, you can't do that. And it didn't matter if it was Lords or Pariah or Lie by Mistake or like they, they were always like very cool with helping me try to like maneuver. Yeah. And then unfortunately, when, um, you know, at, at some point, like when CDs started really drying up, mm -hmm. Uh, I got myself in like some trouble with it where it was like, I, I like lost my distribution deal with metal blade. And then it was like, I was trying to like figure it out. And it, it's, it's just, it's just difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now were you uh, left with like a million CD. Now, like, <laughs> <that> <laughs> yeah. There's um that, like, so yeah, like uh, indie merch has a bunch of stuff out at their warehouse out there in like Ohio that I'm getting charged for storage yeah. and stuff. So uh at one point a lot of it like i had to destroy it like I, like it was a different ball game like where you have to destroy product yeah. and they're paying you yo we could ship it back to you or you know it might be cheaper to like you know give us money to like destroy it i'm like give you money to destroy it you know how much that cost to make it but um yeah i mean it's it, it like it, and it, it was just such a different mindset where you know you used to just be like all right cool make 100 albums and we'll sell 100 albums and yeah yeah like you know all right yeah you make five thousand and then you you, you get you know three thousand of them back and it's just like whoa now that backstabbers that was bare as bones that you put out right yes good release and, and it was awesome because um josh wilbur had produced that um he's a new hampshire guy yeah so like he's like a guy that's like involved in like you know trivium and lamb of god and like oh but, no but he recorded that uh like a, a section of that Barris Bones record, like so. The, there's like a piece of that, and then like their their next the one of the the uh, the trash art record sounds so good yeah. because they happen to be friends with Josh Wilbur, who does these massive, <laughs> you know, massive like trivium bands. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, oh was that like a Kamikaze mission? Yeah. Did he? Did he? I, I think I think he recorded that, and I mean he's just um, you have to Google him. I I can't remember what else. I I just know that like the last time I looked it up, like. It's just like holy smokes! Like this dude does massive things, and like here's his like origins of like you yeah know, doing, doing backstabbers. That, that's sick. I mean, the black market activities put out like so many good 
like bangers though. That Gaza CD is sick. The the two yeah. network CDs is is are like, which is funny because the network is super underrated. Like the, yeah, yeah. A, a, like for me, especially that last one, uh, Bishop Kent Manning. That fucking album is so good. And like, if anybody hasn't heard that, like, you should just jam that. That that album is so good. Yeah. Um, Ed Gain, Ed Gain, you put out. I mean, it's like, there's so many good like releases that Black Market did. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely. Um, you know, there's definitely a lot of cool stuff that was in there, and I was really fortunate. Like, uh, you know, there there was a point in time when like you know we had a lot of really awesome stuff moving and like the tony danza tap dance extravaganza and animosity and like it was you know a lot a lot of the bands were killing it and from a second story window it's awesome that they're like you know they're they're back at it now and i i feel like the stuff that they're doing right now is like as good if not better than before it's it's, it's always nice when you're like holy smokes is like <laughs> you know 20 years later you're hitting your stride somewhere you know yeah yeah now is that something that you would pick up again and start like putting out or or no like you, you... so um yeah like uh so i obviously i'm doing the the red cord reissue like we'll we'll have that up um i'm definitely like pumping the brakes in terms of i'd like to reissue some of the stuff from my catalog yeah. i'm open to doing like a new thing here and there but I want to just be like very methodical where if I'm going to do something, uh, I, I have to kind of like do the risk reward of if I was to lose everything on this thing, <laughs> yeah. like I'm still okay with it, that I'm excited enough that, you know, because like uh, everyone's like hyped up on vinyl right now, mm. like vinyl, like beat me up when, whenever I tried to do it, because yeah. You know, it, it's like if you don't have that vinyl market, it's very expensive to manufacture. And if you, I don't like the um, the uh, like super limited one time drops for some of these. Yeah. Because the way that you were saying, like, oh, I was at work and I was trying to, no, I was, oh, I'll just go back later. And the, yeah. Like, and then it's gone. To, to, to say that you're gonna like. Oh, you're gonna be able to get Die My Will's album from like you know ten to eleven on this one day that you didn't know was gonna happen <laughs> and never again. It's like, well, like that's not fair. Like I've, I've waited, you know, I've waited twenty five years for this. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like, and I, then it's on disc, and then it's on Discogs for five hundred dollars. Yeah, or something like. And, and so I, I like uh, what well, we were like very cognizant, like when we were doing this, to say if we're gonna do Fuse together um we don't want it to be some limited drop we want to reserve the right that if if we blow through this and we need to do a second pressing someday so be it but we're going to like limit it that like you know in the respect that if you have um a certain color we probably won't do the, that color ever again yeah. so you'll know which one is from a first pressing but it, it it's like i'm just not like uh you know on the the quick draw that i'm going to be like oh okay like yeah you, you you know, hey, yeah, you, you could you get a 3 p.m. and that's it. Like, yeah, no, yeah. dude, like, we, we want to put it out in such a way that it's it's real. And, um, you know, but, like, if, if you wanted to get it again, if it makes sense, if, if Newbury Comics wanted to pick it up and, and sell it, like, yeah. we wanted it to be, you know, feasible. Yeah, definitely. It's crazy that cassettes are blowing up, too, now. Like, all of a sudden, everybody's, like, doing cassettes which is crazy to yeah me. but i mean like it's also uh like just understanding the expectation of it like people are making um like people are do yeah we're gonna make a cassette like the the offers that red cord got to do cassettes people were like let me do like 120 cassettes for you yeah. and it's yeah. like well no yeah and and it's like a lot of these like uh i mean I, I think it's awesome that people are excited about bands and labels and releasing music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everybody that was like hitting me up about doing like reissuing black market material or, um, or, or like doing like a, you know, Oh yeah, I'll do fuse together on cassette. Mm -hmm. It was like, what I, what I would be more excited about is go find a local band and that is awesome and yeah. go do a cassette for them, do a the LP for them, and, like, put all of your effort and creative energy into, like, doing, like, more with that. Yeah. And, like, help help put a band on the Yeah, map. yeah. Because, like, yeah. I mean, like, when, when I was doing, when I started Black Market, like, I wanted to help bands that 
really needed help, like backstabbers and found it hanging and dead order drowning. Yeah, yeah. And and like that was the idea. Like keep trying to like, oh, I'm gonna work from a second story window. I'm gonna like pass along the knowledge that I have and I'm gonna do everything possible to keep them doing as much as they wanted to do. And now it's funny because like, you know, you get like, oh, I'm starting um, you know, like no name records. Hey, stop it. Um like I'm starting no name records and I want to like, you know, re, re reissue everything that's on your catalog. And it's like, no dude, like go find an awesome band from your community yeah. and go push them. Yeah. Well, no one wants to hear them. Well, that that's just it. It's like yeah, find yeah. a band that you believe in and get people to care because yeah, that, yeah. that's the way that it was for me. Yeah. Word like, of mouth to the ear. And then, it, and then it, you know, that's a, that's how things go. I, I, I agree with you on that and stuff like maybe like not your, you, you guys' demo, but like a demo from like a band that like the demo came out and like you can't find it anywhere. Like like I would like to see a repress of like the Life Passed On demos. They, they have two demos on Bandcamp. That would be fucking amazing if somebody put those out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and at the end of the day, the, the, the issue with that though is like um, most of the time people want to do that stuff on LP. Mm you're not going to be able to remix any of those. Yeah. Most of those were recorded in such like a shitty way. You're not going to get a better quality. Um, it, the, the life passed on demos are not going to sound better. Like putting them through whatever it is that you're going to do and trying to get them on vinyl than it is through your computer speakers. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, you know, so at that point, like you have a glorified, like, you know, plastic collector's item for the, the people that, that want it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, which I'm all for it. It's just that, like, put it, like, physically say, oh, no, I, I like listening to Life Passed On on uh, on the turntable better. Like, no, dude, like, just you hang it on your wall. It's a decoration, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, all right. You ready for some rapid fire? Uh, as ready as I'll ever be. All right. My first question always is, what is your all-time favorite hardcore metal core band from New England? Um, Stan Black Church. Oh, this is so good. Uh, they like seeing them at the channel for the first time for me because I'm I'm 52, so I got to go to the channel quite a bit back in the day, and I didn't know who the hell they were honestly. And they played with the Mighty Mighty Boston's, and I was blown away by Jet and like the just the performance of him back then when he was like younger. I was like like what is this band i was like i couldn't it was like bad brains with like something yeah. like more metal and like the, i don't know the buzz of the guitars it was it was like something crazy like yeah Sam black Church. i've gone to i've gone to quite a few of their reunion shows as they've gotten it together and um you know even like the more, more recent ones like where, where jet's clearly like yo he's gotten older now yeah. But he has so much energy, so like you know, you you can't fault the guy. Like he definitely brings it. Yeah. And and like they just sound like nobody else. Yeah, it's 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 crazy, like how unique that band is. Um, it's wild. Yeah, I, I don't even like know like uh like if if I was trying to like explain that to somebody that wasn't there, just be like, oh yeah, Sam Black Church, like like how how do you compare? Well, it's kind of doing this like. <laughs> I don't even know it's like sort of moshy and distorted like you know maybe helmet meets like queen or something i, I don't <laughs> yeah. know like what yeah it's, it's wild to describe yeah I'm, I'm with you on that one I, but my love for sam black church is crazy yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and, and like that that was one of those game changer bands like when i was going to going to see them in like the when i was like 15 16 i remember like having like the same Sam Black Church shirt in every color and be like, you know, oh, there's a purple one and the red one and the black one. I'd just buy all three. Yeah, yeah. I remember, like, wearing the Super Christ shirt, I think, in high school, like, way back in the day. Yeah. Um, well, I'll keep, I'll keep going. Uh, my second question is, what was the first hardcore show that you actually went to? Like, not a battle of bands, but, like, a, the first, like, real hardcore show that you went to. So, um, I saw even so that there's i guess two completely separate worlds i i saw cave in with uh like gambit in 10, 10 yard fight in a vfw like somewhere in like uh methuen yeah at yeah. one point um i'd already been seeing like humans being and stuff like that 
but it was like, you know, it, it, it's definitely. And then like on the hardcore, like Boston hardcore side, I saw Blood for Blood, Polyglot, Reason Enough, and um, one of, one of my best friends, like her guitar teacher, was in a band called Dead Reckoning, and like they were opening up. So we went to see Dead Reckoning, and then we got Blood for Blood, and yeah. Like it was, it was just like a war zone. Like, it was just, <laughs> what the hell at the rat? Like, yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, and so, so like those were in my head, like, like, uh, the humans being shows, the blood for blood show, and and like the cave in shows, like, were always like very historic to me. Yeah, yeah. now, did you go to metal shows before you went to a hardcore show? Did you, did you, no, ever I do like that? Like, like, I went I to like, you know, I went to like, you know pantera and and like concerts i went to see like uh so i i I remember like as a kid i went to see like uh i saw quicksand open up for offspring and no use for a name i saw like stone temple pilots and meat puppets and like i I remember my uh my my best friends like dad bringing me to to that but then it like when like the show vibe is just so different yeah, you know, you're gonna just like, oh, this this kid like, yeah, his dad's a member of the American Legion. He did not know that like these kids were gonna just be like, you know, doing this Earth Crisis show. <laughs> and and I uh, Gunface just signed in, Night of Throne. Follow his uh, Twitch stream if you're watching. He does stuff all the time. Nice, nice. Um, I'll go to my uh, third question. My third question is. What was the first, like, real uh, – well, you kind of almost kind of answered it before. Like, the first real Red Chord show in the in the beginning days that kind of, like, you were like, all right, this is – we're, we're like, a, a full-fledged band now. We're, like, you know, we're going somewhere. Like, something that meant something to you back then. Like, well, one of the first ones. Some of our early shows, um, we used to play that uh, Reflections place down in New Bedford. Yep. Um, you know, so, so in like a local ish thing, like I remember re- like reflections, I think it was like a sobriety sort of house that, that just randomly rented it out to bands. Yeah. We, we would play shows there with like, again, without feeling was doing stuff around there. And in my head, I remember thinking like, Oh, they're getting like real shows. Like, yeah. So the fact that we were, were like playing with bands like Escher and again, without feeling and like eternal suffering when we started playing with yeah. them. And then uh, one of the other first, like, real Red Chord shows was uh, there was Cafe Mio in Taunton. And mm-hmm. it was, like, one of one of the earliest shows for us. We played with uh, Blood Has Been Shed and Undying and Eternal Suffering. And uh, that was, like, where I started being, like, oh, okay. Like, we're, like, under the Red Chord name, like, we're kind of in the same breath as, you know, these bands that are on, you know, Ferret and... Yeah tribunal or what you know whatever else was out at the time where we started realizing like okay like the, the like these these guys in my head are are doing the real thing there are bands that are going to play the new england metal fest and like you know and like one of those first metal fests like we started getting like asked to play those where it's like oh yeah okay we're we are absolutely in the same conversation as like uh you know like some of our album release shows like playing with like bands like pig destroyer and circle of dead children yeah and, uh, so like the will the will, willow tip roster, the robotic empire roster, like when we started like playing shows with that, it was like, oh, okay, we're absolutely kind of accepted here in some capacity. Yeah, yeah. Two thousand two, I think I saw the red court. It's funny because like that's where I saw the majority of the shows that I saw you guys at was like two thousand two, two thousand three. I think it might have been like a little bit later when you guys played the Sandown Town Hall with the Network and Psyopus. Yeah, that was a few days later. Uh, that, that was a few years later. That was with uh, Psyopus and uh, the Network played that. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. I think that was oh five. Oh five. Yeah, I think it's something think. like that. That was like, that was a great, great show. Yeah, that, that was cool but like a lot of those early shows like in the more kind of like formative years like at, at that point like people were like uh yeah i mean at that point like, like we were definitely getting like real opportunities we'd already like oh five we played like sounds of the underground and yeah. like, we were actually like kind of like we we were busy like we weren't like i can't say that we were touring full time we were touring to the point where that's all we did because like jobs were no longer ex- allowing us to, to work <laughs> here and take 200 days a year off. Yeah. Yeah. You know? 
Um, but but our parents like you know like let us put our gear you know put our stuff at their houses while we were like living in a van. <laughs> I, I don't know the first time I, I might have been it could have been the creation show that I first saw the red cord or it might have been I saw the red cord play at exit 23 with Mastodon and Halo and uh, Purity's failure maybe yeah 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 so yeah so the so creation's crucifixion that was before that that was and, before uh, that so that must have been yeah. the first time yeah yeah I mean and, and the the best part I'll give a shout out to return to the pit they are have our entire like youth catalog and oftentimes like if i can't figure out like in my head like when something was i just like look on return to the pit.com and like see yeah. all these like oh that was when i had abs you know like, <laughs> yeah, cool but uh that i mean that that mastodon show was was pretty you know pr pretty historic like at exit 23 i put that show on and did the show last minute for mastodon and halo they were supposed to be out with godflesh and uh something happened and then like the god flush like imploded and and didn't do the tour so yeah a uh, bongzilla was supposed to be on that show but like oh really they just never showed up i mean they it was a whopping 40 people but <laughs> um but yeah that that um yeah that show the the one in um rochester new hampshire with creation like we we would like do everything possible or i would do everything possible to like try to like weasel our way on to like when bands are coming yeah. through so like um i i passed off like our demo to like the cephalic carnage guys at one point and they yeah. came through with cephalic carnage and the band december the old eric band oh yeah yeah uh so we, we we managed to like oh we're gonna play maine and western mass and and uh, you know our band like burnt by the sun like we would be like please please like let us play your yeah, yeah yeah um yeah. and create Christian's crucifixion we we jumped on a few days we like ended up set, either setting that up that was the first show that we ever met a life once lost at oh, the okay. uh, rochester new hampshire yeah and, like i mean we we were like already like hooking up with uh robotic empire yeah. at that point and, yeah oh that's crazy now now i think was d d lawrence was the next day right lawrence mass was the next day after rochester i think like what well, did you guys I was uh to... with with, with uh, creation. creation yeah wasn't it lawrence yeah, mass the next day oh was it was it salem salem mass the, oh it might have been was, salem mass i thought it was lawrence though for some reason yeah because one of the one of the shows that i think it was like there's a salem show that we did with creation's crucifixion on earth red cord and like a bunch of stuff um i know we did, did rochester it, it, you know, life once lost did that i i know that that, that was with creation at least yeah um Lawrence, we we used to just play every like there's so many wild wild uh, Lawrence like VFW shows over yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, I, I I think the the other show that I saw was uh, I think I saw you guys at the Salem Elks Club with oh, with this with this day forward and God kiss the cynic maybe like. Uh, I, I know we did some stuff with Kiss the Cynic, and uh, so yeah, we we played some like a, for for a minute there, like when bands were on tour, um, we would get calls like Azalea Dying, one of the first times they ever came through Salem. Like I'd get a call, hey, I booked Azalea Dying, they're from California, and no one's gonna show up. Would you guys jump on the show and try to like bring some people? <laughs> it was like okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and, and, like, like you know, that was like our way of like kind of trading off. Like, hey, I'll put you on this show if you guys play this and try to tell people to go. And yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. So we had done some of those, and and uh, yeah, there's definitely like a few weird weird ones like that where like the bands ended up becoming like really substantial. Yeah, from Autumn to Ashes. Uh, you know, we we jumped on some like tribunal tour thing with like you know, I can't remember who the other band was. Martyr AD and Kill Switch Engage, like we would like you know cross paths with them, and they're all enormous now. We did something yeah. wrong. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, I saw a flyer that um, I went to a Page Ninety Nine show in Manchester, New Hampshire, and the Red we Corp. Did, we didn't play the show. Yeah, but, uh, you were on the flyer, the original flyer, and then you didn't play that show. What happened there? I don't know. This that was also 
So, so I remember there was a ton of shows um, that when, when I was going through the, the flyer collection and sending them over to New England shows, yeah. I, I had to, I had to laugh because there was never like a, like you would call a band and be like, oh, hey, uh, Candaria, do you, do you, do you want to play this show? Yeah, let me look into it. Yeah, I'm just going to throw them on the flyer. <laughs> yeah. and, and then like. And then something would happen, and like you know, the night of the show would be like, ah, I thought I thought I was coming to see you know, torn apart or yeah, the area. yeah. It'd be like, ah, they must have canceled, and and like, you know, it, it was just a much less like legitimate time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, maybe Earth Crisis is gonna play my <laughs> you know backyard, or I put them on the flyer. I hope they show. I did. I did a bunch of Ookla flyers, and I think like Sons of Abraham. You remember that band? Yeah. Um, they, they were always like, yeah, we're, we're going to play, we're going to play. And so I put them on like a bunch of flights. They never showed up. They only played New York. It was like so many, like, you know, it would be like a New Hampshire show, Massachusetts, never show up ever. Never. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there, there was, uh, so I, I will say that, uh, one of the first bands I hit up about the brain tree show, we were trying very hard to get page 99 to do that with us. And, oh. and unfortunately we weren't able to make it work with people's availability, but yeah, that would have been. Well, yeah, that would have been. I I thought the we just going back to the period specific like cool band to see in like a little tiny room like I, I thought yeah. that would have been awesome. Yeah, that would have been awesome. It's crazy. Orchid is getting back together again too. Like the, that the, was something. Show, that show's happening next uh, week from today, actually, or on Sunday the first show is going to be, and then Monday is in Boston at the Royale, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah, I I like it was wild because they put that on sale, and I think they they sold out like Royale and. You know, a day. Yeah, it was pretty quick. <laughs> that's like a that's like a fifteen hundred cap room or something. Like yeah, that, that is, and that was weird because like Orchid, I mean, there was there was hype on them locally, um, hmm. but I mean, it was like hype in the respect that like one hundred fifty people would show up in someone's house and and watch it. The, the fact that they came out and like blew that out, yeah, in the way that they did is like it, it's just weird to think that there's. Uh, there's that many like orchid like leftovers now. I, th I think it's. I mean, honestly, I think they got more popular after they they broke up. You know what I mean? I think the the it was more of the lore of back in the you know like the whatever it is like the screamo days. Like I think like the younger kids kind of you know they, they're like the legends of that genre. You know what I mean? And I think I feel like they got more popular as like they weren't together. And yeah, now. I I like I I guess like when when that orchid uh, show announcement popped up, I just I hadn't thought of them or or considered that they would be doing stuff. Uh, it is definitely, you know, I I, I guess people are, uh, I I guess people are jazzed up on it because like as soon as they announced it, like their you know the Instagram page exploded, the 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 shows all sold out. So good for them. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm actually going to uh monday's show so awesome. I, i'm sure it's gonna be i'm sure it's gonna be yeah. awesome it'll be cra it'll be crazy um, those, uh, those skinny little guys are gonna be all like <laughs> middle-aged and overweight can't wait to see the pictures <laughs> well like gray haired guys gonna be you know a <laughs> bunch of gray haired guys yeah welcome to the club fellas yeah <laughs> um my next question is what is your all-time favorite hardcore show like metalcore show that you went to that you didn't play that you went to go see what what's your favorite show that you went to see like a hardcore show what what meant the most to you that you didn't play at all I didn't play at all um let's see i mean it so that's interesting because there's just different things that meant different stuff at different times like some yeah. of those uh going to see bands like earth crisis like uh, you know in, in like places like the middle east and like how pumped up i was at the time or going to see you know vision of disorder like at you know avalon yeah. that was special in the respect that like avalon was like the big room mm -hmm. and i remember thinking like whoa like these hardcore bands like really just you know they, they, it's it's doing something it's like it's real like you know you were rooting for them so stuff like that was uh was definitely awesome in the respect that the these bands were graduating to like that next level mm. um but i mean i i still to this this day think like some of those 
like the the best and most influential shows to me were the ones that no one was at that you know you were you were seeing your friends band for the first times and yeah that, i mean that, those those things like really just kind of resonated um you know it probably more more so like when we were playing them just because like you you felt like you were a part of like you know like same like playing with Mastodon and Exit Twenty Three. Yeah, yeah. Like that that was just just something you knew something special was going to happen, and you knew that something bigger was going to happen. Hopefully, but yeah. Um, that this is kind of goes with that question. What is your all time favorite show that the Red Chord played that meant the most to you? Or give me a couple, because obviously you guys have played a billion shows. So, um, so one of the one of the more, more like remarkable things was when when we started uh like we we had a real hard time getting tours mm -hmm. so when we actually started teaming up with bands like between the buried to me and premonitions of war and um and we started actually like pulling people in other places that weren't just like our home area mm -hmm. like that was so special to us just be, because it was like okay you go from like like we were we were always excited to play anything so you'd show up to somewhere and there's 40 people and like yeah this is awesome people were people were stoked yeah and, and you could you could get down with that but when we did the um the the first premonitions red cord uh bt band tour that was like everything about that was special and especially like we passed through um there was a show that we did that if, if you see the um the original dreaming in dog ears video there's like a there's a video that like kevin had edited out of like a bunch of footage and there's a bunch of these like wild crazy like we we actually like did like a headline show at uh the palladium upstairs yeah. and like it sold out and it was just like wow wait a second like we just played to 450 people in mass like that's like yeah you know, that's like triple what we were generally playing to it you know in, in that era yeah. so that that was like pretty special when we started being like, wow, we, we've, you know, we, we've kind of like, like hit our stride as far as like local goes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now like the, the fest is, is that exciting or is it kind of like a long day for you guys? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, at, at this point, um, everything is exciting. Cause like, you know, it's like, well, what, what was I going to do that day? I was going to go to work and brush my teeth maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, so uh, I mean, every show that we get, like we we went from playing at at the height of things, like playing um, you know two hundred plus shows in a year, mm -hmm. to last year we played one. We yeah. we played Denver, Colorado, yeah, and and the year before that playing three. So everything that we get to do at this point is absolutely just awesome. And like yeah. I, I I'll never take any of that stuff for granted. Where yeah, it's 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 long. It's work. It, there's definitely like a lot of uh, the logistics behind the scenes. Like okay, well how do you, how do you plan for ordering t-shirts for this? How do you yeah. how are we gonna get our gear there? How are we gonna like all like the stuff that you like before it was like you know you had a van, you had everything. Like it was just the the, the actual logistics were all set up. Um, so there's definitely like, like work that goes into it, but. Like when we did the first show back in 2022, the uh, the the decibel like client set. Oh yeah, that, yeah. that was so special. Like I mean, that was like nerve wracking. It was it was scary. It was exciting. Yeah. Like it's like we hadn't been on stage in seven years, and that was like when you start realizing like you really can't take this stuff for granted. Yeah, that's 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 sick. Um, but I'm I'm a big movie guy. I always ask this: uh, What was the last movie you watched? Um, Ricky Stenicki. <laughs> and what'd you, <laughs> and what'd you think of that? It was incredible. <laughs> yeah. nice. Absolutely incredible. I, I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, brainless and hilarious and, and just exactly what I needed. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, I always ask this, it's kind of a two parter to the movie question. Uh, what is your all time favorite horror movie? Um, I, I'm partial to the Evil Dead stuff and, you know, the Army of Darkness. I remember seeing that when I was a kid. And I, I love the, the, the campy, you know, gore effects. Yeah. 
Yeah. What uh, did did you enjoy the new um, the newest Evil Dead Rise of Evil Dead or what, whatever? I'll be called. a fan. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen it. Yet. <laughs> no, I I, 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 I probably I, no matter there's there's no chance I'm going to enjoy it as much as I did like the Bruce Campbell era. Yeah, but, yeah. Nice, yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice. Um, another thing, I I'm like a big '90s hip hop guy. I I filmed a lot of '90s hip hop artists live and stuff like that. And uh, I always ask this: if you've been listening to any hip hop at all, if you like hip hop, uh, what have you been listening to? I I have not been listening to much in in the realm of hip hop lately. Uh, most of the stuff I end up listening to is like a I I, I love like that Wu Tang and and that whole era of of things. But in terms of like, like new, new rap and hip hop, not not so so much. Yeah, I, I'm open to suggestions. I I do uh, I do like it i just haven't actively like sought it out yeah yeah nice nice um have you i wanted to ask you this also um is there any new heavy bands that you want to let anybody know that you've been listening to that you've been enjoying that maybe somebody hasn't heard uh is there any heavy bands that you've been listening to lately that maybe somebody hasn't heard sure sure uh, so I, I i always like to start with local bands whenever I can. Uh, recently I went out to see Conforza. Um, they're, they're, uh, from, from like the Manchester area area. And, uh, there's a band that, uh, the guys were signed in here a little bit called cytokine. They do a, they have like a basement venue and the guitar players, uh, spot. They're, they're pretty cool. And they've definitely been like doing the local circuit and, Woo Meter, I went out to see them kind of recently. Um, as far as other bands that I've run into recently that I've been pretty excited about, like uh, uh, Left Behind, I don't know if you've ever gotten into them. I haven't heard them. They're like, I, I always kind of wonder with um, with some of these bands, like Left Behind like really stands out to me. Like they're, they're kind of like, uh, they remind me of Entomb. Mm-hmm. but like with a obvious like hardcore spin on yeah. it um and and it's like i think that like a lot of even like when you listen to like to like knock loose or like one of those bands like that yeah. like the guitar tone is straight up entombed mm. and you go wonder if they got it from entombed or like if it went the long way where entombed influenced everything else that eventually like influences them if they know if they know that they're entombed you know yeah but but uh yeah they, they're they're one of the few that's like recently that really been really been pumped on um yeah i'm trying to think uh i'd, I'd pull up my spotify playlist but i'd, I'd somebody screw up so- our, somebody just said gotta check out authors of fate have you heard that band i have not not but pierre uh pierre is a hell of a musician himself so so that's a good recommendation then <laughs> we'll, we'll yeah. have to check that um and finally my last question um what are some of the give me like your top three songs that you like to perform live for you especially like what, what three songs do you red chord songs do you like to play live <laughs> So I've been um, I've been bugging the guys about playing Mouthful of Precious Stones every chance I get. Sorry, it got kind of just dark in here all of a sudden. <laughs> there we go. Nightfall. My see my, my dog over here, just hanging. <laughs> my dog. At my side. Dog. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So we we were like throwing out what we what we wanted to do for some of these sets so a uh, mouthful of precious stones for me is one that that i that i love greg from red Cord just joined uh face area solution was another request that i had made just trying to get the guys to do it and um probably like a train through a pigeon that was something that came up during the fuse and i was, I was pretty excited to go back and, and play it because both like pigeon and jar full of bunny parts have the same thing going on where there's a little bit more to like the story and the lyrics than like the shock value of the the title. And like so, sometimes like when I, when I like think about that, like it, it brings me back to like the, the headspace that I was in when I was like writing that record and yeah. makes me, makes me uh, 
reminisce for being like young and creative and inspired. Now from Milwaukee, um, what, like, is there one few song that, that you guys will be doing on that, on that set? Uh, I think we're, we're talking about doing a few. Um, I don't know for sure. I'm sure dog ears will end up in there. Uh, that seems to, we, we can't get away from that one. Yeah. Which, you know, it, it it's a it's a cool track. We never expected that to be like the track. Yeah. But we'll we'll, we'll I'm sure we'll play dog ears. But uh, I I don't know what else we were gonna do. Um, we were getting pretty jazzed up on. Um, uh, I like that certain special ugly. Mm, yeah. That, I was I just say that. that was that was different. I I I don't know where we're gonna wind up. Uh, if we'll end up playing that, I don't think that we'll end up doing ugly in Milwaukee. Yeah. Maybe maybe in Texas. We'll we'll yeah. see. L formations. I I love the L L formation. I love too. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was I was getting cre- uh, I was trying to be uh, witty the other day and 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 say like, uh, hey, if we do another beer, we should call it. Uh, ale formation, <laughs> you know, our little boutique beer. So. Oh, nice, nice. Now, lastly, do you have anything that you would like to plug to, to let people know what's going on besides like Milwaukee Metal Fest that's coming up uh, and then the big Texas Metal Fest and obviously the Braintree shows? I mean, is there anything else? That, yeah, like... so so short term, um, in the next couple of weeks here, we're going to we'll, – we'll, we'll come up with a date that the LPs will actually be – ready to you know ready to roll um like we're we're trying to like you know revamp our you know e-store and get some new cool designs we have a killer t-shirt design that um we had so when we did the fused project there's so much like kind of thought that went into some of the stuff um mike Wahlberg, he's like the creative uh like editor for uh like the all all the visual stuff for decibel he was like the biggest push as far as us actually getting off our butts and getting fused together. Mm-hmm. So he ended up reimagining like the actual like album art, and uh, and, and like he like I I know that the album cover and everything is there, but he did like the the weird monster hand thing and yeah. So we got like Adam uh, Adam Wentworth who did the original layout to like get permission for him to kind of like reimagine the hand. Yeah, yeah, and then. The other, uh, the other awesome band locally, uh, Stagnator. If you have a chance to check them out, yeah, yeah, I've, they're, I've they're sick. Yeah, man. Um, Mark Richards is a hell of an illustrator, and he's been coming out to our shows since he was like a little kid. And you know, they're they're playing the uh, the the second day of that Brain Tree thing, so he does Tomb Gallery tattoo up in Salem, and we got. Uh, I had asked him if he wanted to do some sort of like either a poster or a shirt or something for us. Mm-hmm. So uh, he did a reimagined hand as well, and I cannot wait to put this out because basically he did this real gory fused together hand with like different song themes for each of the fingers. Oh, sick! Which I cannot wait to get that up. So like when we're when we're relaunching like our our web store with the LP and stuff, like I can't wait. Just like visually, like getting to work with some of the um, the illustrators like mike Wahlberg, like mark richards we we just uh we we did some stuff with this kid brendan flynn who had done like uh the ed gein like bad luck record and so he was like doing a like a train through a pigeon it was awesome to just be like we could hit up some of the most creative and amazing guys and just be like can you help us we 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 never really got to do some of this stuff back in the day would would you help us like do uh you know just, just imagine this and bring it to life and have it. So I'm really, really excited for that stuff. Yeah. Now what? Now do you have the official date that the the record will drop? Yet we're we're trying to do uh we're trying to do it the week before Milwaukee. So Milwaukee we're playing on the 18th. So I'm hoping it's going to be sometime that week. We're yeah. just trying to like get some stuff organized on that end. Uh, my understanding is like the records are pressed and are going to be like in transit and shipping Mm -hmm. um so like uh you know i was just in touch with the the um vinyl plant today those guys are amazing studio four big shout out they're really great u.s based you know east east coast based yeah uh they were unbelievable to work with and um 
yeah, so like we're we're trying to like actually pretend to be professional. And uh, Deathwish was helping us as far as like the distribution of the record. Yeah. And we were going to actually like have some copies go over to Europe so that like our, our European fans could actually like buy it at the same time and wouldn't just get juiced with like astronomical shipping. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That, that's awesome. That's, that's awesome. And I, I still have, yeah. uh, I still have the original. There's, there's a lot of, I sold almost everything, but there's some CDs that I would never sell. Although I, I only have the <laughs> CD and no artwork cause I lost the artwork cause it was in a CD case. So, but Dude, I, yeah, I, I cannot wait to, um, for people to actually get, get the, the LP, just like the, the exciting thing with the, the vinyl is like, you know, having the, you know, a large, you know, I think that the insert is like, you know, like one of the 12 by 24 in front and back. And yeah, nice. We have like kind of a cool, like little, uh, like little theme going on inside the, the reimagined record. And I can't wait for people to actually like get it in their hands and look at it. And, yeah. you know, we, we got some, uh, some cool photos from like back in the day to, to get uh, the, the rev again, return to the pit. Just the fact that he has like everything in life, like cataloged like that. Yeah. It, it pretty incredible yeah that website is unbelievable I, I mean any pretty much he went to every show back then he, like, he, he was, did and he's still going and he's still going now he's still doing it now it's crazy yeah i i i, I think he has like a like a warp zone or something that he can like make it from place to place and in, in record time <laughs> i know it's crazy uh guy i want to thank you so much for taking time out i, I appreciate you i, I know like work and stuff like that you know it's tough to get time to to do these things so i appreciate it a lot uh red cord means a lot to me i've always been a big fan and uh i can't wait to like hopefully I, i'd love to hear some new music i know uh it's kind of on the hush right now but well no no F fingers crossed i i gotta say that um you know i really really hope that we get it together um I, i'm like a big fan of the members of my band uh, I, I, I watch every, you know, I, I always pay attention to listen to the things that they like that, that they do. So like, you know, I really enjoy like Umbra Vitae and I, I really enjoy like, you know, just all, all, all sorts of other stuff that they do, but I'm like, really, I, I fingers, I, I think that we're in a good place where like, we're, we're all facing the same direction and want the same thing. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Awesome. I, I'd, I'd love and, and, I, and I appreciate you doing uh, this sort of stuff. I know that you did like, you know, a hundred of these episodes and I, I really enjoyed the, the Dimitri interview recently. And I've watched some of the other ones and like, uh, you know, I, j just the fact that like uh, that you're able to, you know, take a time out of your adult life and, and, you know, do what you need to do to like still shine a light on, on bands. Like, you know, I, I, I agree. I I appreciate it. I mean, I oh, like it's funny. I always get requests on like, oh, you should talk to this band, or you should talk to that band. It's like, personally, I only talk to bands and people that like, like I love the band and I admire the the muse, the music, and and that's what who I want to talk to. And and if it was a band that hadn't played for a while, I want to shed light so somebody goes back and listens to that band. You know what I mean? Sure. They're like, oh, shit, I forgot about that band. Let me go back and listen to that. <laughs> and then the, and then they're like, oh, shit, I forgot how much I love this band. I'm going to start, like, playing this band all the time. Like, that's what I'm trying to do and, and still bring in the new music, too, that people are listening to nowadays, too. So Yeah, and, and I mean, especially, like, from my youth, there was, like, a mysticism about a lot of uh, a, a lot of groups, like, where you just didn't understand the background and you just couldn't find any information. So I, I love it, like, when all of a sudden, like, a band like Dime I Will or something is coming back, and then you could, like, dig, 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 seven-day curse, like, you know, where do these guys come from? What are they doing? Like, I, I loved all, all these bands when I was a kid, yeah. and I can't get enough of it. Every once in a while, I'll, like, be doing something and I'll run into some member of, you know, one of these like little no name underground bands that really affected me when I was a kid. Yeah. I'll just be like, just, you know, geeking out, throwing questions at them. Like, Hey, what about this rumor business? And it was like, Oh yeah. I mean, you know, they were, they were around for two or three years when, when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, I did that recently with, um, uh, Kurt Klump is, is, uh, used to be in that band, uh, I Val Deva or I'm dead now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking and, about. And now he's in a band called uh, New Hell. Oh, really?
So really cool. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was just funny because, like, Ivel Deva was doing this, like, you know, dead guy worship thing. Yeah. Like, I think they recorded with Kurt Ballou in, like, 1998. And I just remember seeing them and being like, whoa. And uh, I, I recently connected with, with him, like, on uh, Instagram. And I was just like, dude, I love Ivel <laughs> Deva. Like, he was just like, I was in that band. Like, it was just, like, one of these things, like. Yeah, yeah. Where, I, I, I actually want to see non-compost Mentis get a have a comeback uh i'd love to see yeah, they them. were cool I, man i love that that band like every time i saw that band i was blown away just you know the uniforms that they wore yeah. and like i mean it was like you know it's like kind of like the locust meets uh something like i mean they, they were they were a trip i i only caught them the once in um in lynn and um I know that like humans being was always like doing stuff with them. Humans being, I I, I wonder what those guys got into because yeah yeah like, they were a really really influential band on me as a kid just in the respect that like I used to just drive all over all over New England to go see them play anywhere. Yeah yeah, and, I, uh, I I think I saw them a handful of times up in Rochester at the Safe and Sound. They played, uh, which is weird. I think they played with One King Down, which is kind of like a. <laughs> This is kind of strange, but hey, yeah. it worked. Uh, Guy, thank you so much. Uh, let's stay in touch. Uh, Thanks, any, you know, if you need anything, give me a ring. Uh, and thank you again, and have a great night. Thanks for letting me chop it up. All right, man. Take it easy. Yep, see ya.